Many of you know I came into Unitarian Universalism in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the uh, my home church minister, Tom Goldsmith, served there for 36 years. And he read this poem every Easter of his entire ministry, which lasted over 40 years. It's from E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for this most amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I who have died am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life, of love and wings, and of the gay great happening of this illimitable earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any lifted from those of no, of nothing at all, to human merely being doubt unimaginable you? Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are open. E.E. E. Cummings. Easter is the highest of the Christian holy days, and a day often fraught with difficulties for Unitarian Universalists. We celebrate the resurrection of Earth, the coming of spring, yet Easter's a lot more than that. We celebrate with symbols, metaphors, and realities of this important day. But let me be clear, Easter ain't about rabbits. <laughs> We Unitarian Universalists, I mean, we understand Christmas. I mean, Jesus was born. We understand Good Friday. Jesus died. It's Easter. It's difficult for us. Many Unitarian Universalists carry the scars and baggage from a less than ideal Christian experience in their past. But most of us, 60%, maybe higher by some estimates, were raised in other denominations. And an increasing number of Unitarian Universalists were previously unchurched. A very small minority were raised Unitarian Universalist. So with most of us coming from other religions and many of us carrying wounds of Christianity, the Easter story can be difficult. And we resist the literal acceptance of the story. But too many of us throw out the baby with the bathwater when it comes to Christianity. Here's my belief. I believe in resurrection. And let me explain. I don't believe in the resurrection, but I believe resurrections happen. With all my being, I believe in resurrection because I have seen it happen countless times. In people who sum up the courage and their stores of resilience, Resilience that they didn't even know they had. I have seen resurrection happen in communities like this fellowship, when people are willing and able to encourage one another, to literally instill courage in one another, to impart courage from one heart to another. No, I don't think a dead man got up out of the tomb and started walking around but I do think something happened. One or more people had visions of Jesus and it affected them profoundly. It changed their outlook about his death. Out of a tragedy came a triumph. Out of an ending came a new beginning. Out of death came life. I have encountered people who were spiritually hollow lost in the events of their life, or lost in the pursuit and the illusion of happiness. These folks are spiritually numb, and some, I would call them spiritually dead. And I have seen some spiritual zombies who wake up and be resurrected into a life of meaning and purpose. And maybe you know, maybe you know someone who's been resurrected this way. Maybe it's you. Resurrections happen. 
People are changed and born into a new way of life. It happens. I call it resurrection. The worship theme for April is resistance. And today we will talk about resistance to what that happens that we just don't like. And you know what I'm talking about? Those events that you didn't see coming? Those events that upset your best plans? Those events that tick us off? Those diagnoses that are life altering? That text in the middle of the night? Resistance to what is. But what if there was a path in life that didn't resist our fate? What if there was a path that accepted what happens, not, not naively and not passively surrender, but a love of our fate? Everything that has happened to you in your life has brought you to this point. It has formed you. It has created who you are. Everything that's happened to you. Now, you may class some of your events of life as good, you may class some as tragic, but I say that you would not be who you are today were it not for the totality of all your experiences. The Stoic philosophers call it amor fati, a love of fate. Emperor Marcus Aurelius said it this way, a blazing fire makes flame and brightness out of everything that is thrown into it. Another Stoic, Epictetus, said it this way, he was a cripple and he was a slave. He knew adversity. He said, do not seek for things to happen the way you want them to. Rather, wish that what happens, happens the way it happens, then you'll be happy. But in the modern age, it was Friedrich Nietzsche, German philosopher, who brought this philosophy to the Western world. He described his formula for human greatness as a more fati, love of fate. He said, quote, that one wants nothing to be different, not forward, not backwards, not in all eternity not merely bear what is necessary, still less to conceal it, but to love it. Nietzsche proposed this great thought experiment, and I think it's in the, the gay science. He talks about it. What if the life you're living right now, what if there was the eternal recurrence? That is, you would be destined to live this exact life over and over. You couldn't change anything. Everything that's happened to you, every joy, every sorrow, every tragedy, it would be repeated, and it would repeat it over and over. So after maybe a hundred times or so, wouldn't you begin to think like, I can react differently to what's happening to me? And with enough practice, can you imagine that maybe you would really begin to love this life because there is no other one? So his experiment of eternal recurrence is all about accepting, loving what happens to you. You love your fate, amor fati. How about no need to retouch, deny, hide, or bury any of your past experiences? So why not start now? Why wait for the eternal recurrence? Why not start now? Could, could this be your restart? Could this be your reboot? Could you drop your resistance to what happens to you, putting it as unfair, unjust? Can you just, beyond acceptance, love it? Could this be your resurrection into fully living into this life? Now, I believe Jesus accepted his fate. Jesus knew his life would end when he rode into Jerusalem, and yet he still rode in. The crowd cheered his arrival, but a few days later, they turned on him and yelled for his crucifixion. From what has been written, this turn of fate didn't alter Jesus' actions. He could have run away. He could have hid, as some of his disciples did. Did he love his fate? I think so. 
I think that's why it's so inspiring about his resurrection story. Whether you believe it literally or metaphorically, Jesus was altered, changed, and out of death came life. And the same kind of transformation is available to all of us. What about us? What about right now? Can we be resurrected from our routine, numb life to be fully present? Can we accept and fully enjoy each moment? Can we stop denying and burying the unpleasant events and see them as the teachers that they really are? Can we be changed to be a person who would be willing to live this exact life a hundred times, a thousand times, and be ecstatic each time? If so, can you see this kind of existence? Your life can be transformed. Transformed into a life not of slogging through each day, hoping that nothing bad happens, to a life of loving what does happen. If, it, if an injustice occurs to you, can you love it as it becomes a motivation for you to act? When injustice occurs to others, can you love it because it draws attention from yourself to others? Do you see where this kind of approach to life leads? It leads to the best possible existence. It leads to heaven on earth. Have you ever thought about life that way? This is heaven. This is as good as it gets. And it's up to us to love it. Amor Fati. Jesus was resurrected on Easter Day. His ministry continues to inspire and transform people. Do you believe that you can be transformed? No matter how wonderful you think you are, I say you're not done yet. A better life is always available. And it starts with a little personal resurrection. Amen. And blessed be.